So David, you're going to talk a little bit about night photography. You're going to talk about Death Valley at night. Uh, what else are we going to get here in the next couple of minutes? Um, that's really it where I'm just talking about different, um, subjects that you can photograph in Death Valley, especially during the winter. That's more than the core of the Milky Way because it's not visible that time of year. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's still pretty awesome, right? Uh, no, I totally. mean, to, to shoot the stars and to see what you can see. So, all right, all right, go, I, I'll stop interrupting you. Go for it. <laughs> all right. Thanks. All right. Um, so first off, why is night photography so good in Death Valley? So light pollution is a big reason for this. So here you can see a map of the U.S. showing the Bortle levels, which is just the amount of light pollution for an area. So white is bad and black is the darkest skies that you can find. So if we zoom into Death Valley, you'll see the terrible light pollution coming from Las Vegas. But in Death Valley, you can see that most of the park has very dark skies. And this little dot of light pollution is Furnace Creek, where we'll be at for the conference, where most people stay. And even here, the skies are incredibly dark. And even if you just drive a short distance, you can get to some of the darkest skies that you've likely seen before. And even if you just um, come out from your hotel or pop out from your tent, you'll see incredible skies. It's just crazy. So most, most of the park is in a Bortle class of two, and the lowest level is actually a one. So these are close to some of the darkest skies that you'll actually see. And they're just incredible. The stars just glow in the sky. So if you've never seen skies like this before, I have to tell you that it can be life-changing. Well, what's that word so, that you're saying? Bortle? Bortle? <laughs> That's I just know, how I they like, measure it. Bortle? <laughs> Like, are we going to a different universe? I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the Bortle level is basically how, is that the word you're saying? It's basically yeah. how measures the, how they, they the measure light, light pollution. pollution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so um, some people don't realize that the core of the Milky Way is not visible in the winter in the Northern Hemisphere. It's below the horizon, essentially November through February. So what the heck is there to photograph, you might ask. So first off, the Milky Way is visible, just not the core. So there are plenty of opportunities to photograph something that most others just ignore. And I actually love the, mil the winter Milky Way. It's more subtle and nuanced, and it's not screaming in your face. Instead, it's a really nice, subtle complement to the landscape. So this was created from Zabriskie Point, probably the easiest to access location in Death Valley. And here's another example of the winter Milky Way taken over one of the many unique salt playas in Death Valley. And you can also see the And Andromeda galaxy to the left of the Milky Way. It's just kind of a tiny little smudge, but it's kind of cool that you can see that. And here's one from Badwater Basin. This is a very popular location where you won't actually see many people at night, typically. And even if you do, you can escape them pretty easily by walking further out and just finding different formations. Just be sure to bring your GPS if you're going out at night. It's incredibly easy to get disoriented, disoriented and have no idea where your car is. So this was a vertical panorama where I focus stacked um, the foreground to get everything sharp. And I also panned up to get more of the sky. So this wasn't an easy image to pull off. And here's another from Badwater where, where there, there was water on the playa. And this creates incredible opportunities for reflections of the stars in your foreground. And you'll see a lot more of those. So very few people know about zodiacal light, um, but it's a fantastic subject for you to photograph on those long nights of winter in Death Valley. So what the heck is zodiacal light? In the image, it's the triangular light in the sky. And put simply, it's the sunlight reflecting off tiny particles in space called cosmic dust. And scientists believe that the dust is from the Jupiter family of comets and asteroids colliding, and it creates this dust. So it can be photographed just after sunset from Zabriskie Point in the spring, and also anywhere else in the park, you just need to be looking west. So that's not Las Vegas. No, the, um, it's actually, um, it's so actually that's not false. light pollution. No, <laughs> but it is commonly um, mistaken for that um, because it's also called false dawn because people think that it is. 
Uh, um, you know, the sun rising or light pollution. You're just you're just full of the fun facts, David. I love it. <laughs> Science. The bowling was the best fun fact, but <laughs> uh, we will appreciate that one forever. That'll be the gift that keeps on giving. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here you can see it from bad water again. Um, again, you can only view the light in the spring, um, just after sunset as it gets fully dark or in the fall in the early morning, which is not nearly as fun because it's 5 a.m. and it's cold and yeah, nobody wants to do that. But um, so here you can see it again, along with um, Venus is the bright spot near the horizon. And the light, the zodiacal light follows the zodiac, um, which is the same path that the planets follow in the sky. So you can often see Venus with this light. And here again at Badwater, here I created a two row panorama to show the zodiacal light and the w winter Milky Way all in the same image. So one important thing to note is that the light is facing to the west. So this opens up compositional opportunities that you couldn't achieve with the core of the Milky Way, which is generally to the south. And you can also photograph constellations, but the most interesting, inter interesting, interesting one in the winter is certainly Orion. So here you can Ooh. see it above the Joshua tree, which adds some character to the sky. And I love the subtleness of these type of images. It's not the typical Milky Way image. Um, this is a little bit more peaceful and relaxing, a bit more like your experience would be under these dark skies. And once again at bad water um, you can see portions of orion reflecting in the water and this was just an amazing experience viewing the stars at the lowest point in north america while we had this flooded it was just so cool to be there and here um, at the racetrack i was able to use some moonlight to show off the sailing stones along with orion blazing above above um, and I had to take several images as a vertical panorama to capture all of this and stitch those together. Hmm. And you can also photograph during twilight, just as the stars are beginning to appear in the sky. Here at Augeberry Point, I was able to see a few stars through the clouds, which added a little something extra to something that was kind of an unextraordinary scene. And then again, at Zabriskie Point, um, we had some very thin high clouds that made the stars just glow, giving kind of this sense of wonder. And finally, an interesting uh, stream that was created by spring in one of the many salt playas. So during twilight, this landscape just glows with reflected light from the sky, and it adds another dimension to a scene that would otherwise be really mediocre. So that's what I got, Chris. That was awesome. All right. Well, actually, I should uh, I should hit you with the applause, right? <laughs>